Hi guys, today I want to talk to you a little bit about the cheat gainer, slant gainer, flash gainer, whatever you want to call it. I even differentiate the two because, because the cheat gainer goes to the side a little bit more. Um, flash gainer's here and slant's like 45. Uh, not 45, but in between those. Um, there's not a huge, huge, huge difference between those, but uh, they all can, differentiations of those can actually help you better understand yourself as a performer, acrobat, tricker, b-boy, everything like that, dancer. Um, but there's, uh, I do have a little video that I made a while back showing my progression and how I learned how to do a cheat gainer. Not everyone's going to progress that way and it took me several years to get that because of those progressions, but I have it, have it good and I'll never forget how to do it. Um, I'm going to show one real quick just so you can see it. I'm going to do this from a scoot approach because that's how I'm going to be showing the rest of these skills in here that uh, apply to this specifically. So here is a scoot cheat gainer. really power overdrive on that one, but I travel a lot with it too. But um, that was just a quick one for you. Now I want to show you a couple of things that I think are crucial, a couple, that's three. I want to show you a few things that are crucial to learning this skill um, that I think are like the bail techniques of this. One of them is having a good back handspring because if you have a good back handspring, you pretty much have developed this whole arching ability to bail any skill that has an arch in it. And that's probably one of the scariest things about doing those kind of skills is because when you do an arching skill, you have to kind of do it slightly different than you do a like laid out or lifting uh, back up where you kind of hit that straight line first. So you want to know how to have a good back handspring. Um, I'll go this direction. And you want to step down on the same leg you'll be doing the flash on. Uh, one good way to think about that is that if you cartwheel, over your left side, you want to swing your right leg up because you're kicking that leg like that. All right, so back handspring. Oh, here's a crude one for you, back here. Just arching over, jumping over, and that was a pretty bad one, but I can put my hands down and then put my feet down, and that saves me from any bad landings, okay? Now, if you don't have a back handspring, you can always do a macaco and that is kind of a walking over bridge from a one-handed position. Um, this is actually, the side that I do this on is actually my worst side for it. I do better this uh, going straight over on my right side. I have shoulder issues with my left, so I'm working on that. But I'm gonna show you what I do to kind of get that idea in there. So I'd be from the left side here, okay, and I jump over this direction, kind of get as much of an arch in my back as I can as I go over. Now, having that alone, and leading up to that, I've actually learned how to do like a jumping macaco, where you would be here, you jump and arch over, which is kind of more like a cartwheel, but I have a slight arch in there. It's gonna be beneficial to you because the cheat gainer kind of falls into that realm of movements. Once you kind of figure that out, you can throw a bunch of mats down on the floor or do this into a sand pit or something like that, and you can do what I call the scoot to kind of the bail cheat gainer. So, if I throw a couple mats down. Lift, mat, okay? And from here, as I swing through, I'm just gonna kind of like fall onto the mat and jumping out of it from a little cartwheel position. Uh, not cartwheel, sorry, scoot position. So first time your scoot with this so you know how far you're gonna have to go. And you're gonna do this kind of half-heartedly because you're gonna be learning this skill originally and kind of kind of be afraid to do this full out. So if I was coming here, okay, all right, that seems pretty safe for me. Notice what I'm doing is when I come up, I'm still letting my leg come through, all right, but I'm gonna start to arch over this way, bringing my arm here, other arm here, and that's going to help me feel the arch of the move, spot the ground, and lift the leg um, while trying to bring my hips over the top of my shoulders. And that's kind of where we miss this, uh, this uh, gradation, this gray area of where we're trying to fill up between going over straight over the top and turning it to the side to create that uh, cheat look, which helps work out forks and things like that. Another move, too. So, this is the move I want to show you. It is a scoot look. 
kind of a half heart achieve gainer macaco cartwheel thing. And I found that this is kind of a good way to get people to kind of bridge that gap between the two. And then once they kind of get the comfort of doing that, they can start to actually lift up a little bit more and a little more. So this is what it looks like. From here, you have your scoop up, and you're jumping over to the side. In a way, it feels very, very similar to doing a uh, master swipe um, and how you have to have that arch in there, except that you're just going off the same leg. Because when you come here, it's just the weird angle of your body. Um, so you can keep building that over and over again until you start building the height out of that. And as you get that higher and higher, it starts developing into um, that cheek gainer out of it. So once again, going from here, here, swing up, swing over, all right? And the one thing you want to avoid is you want to make sure that your leg comes through, because that's going to decide where your hips go. Attached to the hip, it's going to pull it one way or the other. You notice anybody having a hard time, sometimes when they do gain it for the first time, they might turn this off to the side because if they bring their leg across here, their hips turn that way. I have that same problem when I'm doing wall flips. I have to flip on the other side actually because this leg is so used to coming this way and turning to the side, all right, for um, that swing through technique that it turns me to that side almost every single time and the head wants to turn that way. So, building that, and then one more thing you want to troubleshoot is you don't want to make sure that you're not, um, when you come up, that you're not uh, tipping over this way too soon. Focus on the arch. Even if in the video it looks like you're coming sideways, focus on that arch, and that's going to help you a lot more develop it. This is what I'm talking about with the thing you don't want to do. So if you're coming through this way, your leg stays behind, you end up doing one of these things and turning that way. You know, that's okay for a couple of times, but allow yourself to really arch over. You have a mat down, even if you're really, really low and the arms are bent, you know, you might get a little mat face in there, but you'll be okay so long as you're arching. So like, here's a really, really bad one that still I think is better than nothing. So if I was here, here, up here, that to me is probably better than doing the other one when you're here and you're turning like that and you're sitting down because you're pretty much negating the ability of your hips to go over the top of your head and allowing you to flip over the top, um, which is what we want to get for that position. So, I'm gonna do this one more time without it. And you can see the full motion of it. Uh, and good luck on your cheat game. See you next time.